frame 14. At least a dent. Ronnie O'Sullivan to break. In O'Sullivan's commanding lead. Matches have been won from this sort of deficit. Not many, but a few. Y you'll remember one of them, Stephen. You were 7 0 and 8 2 down against Mike Hallett in the Masters final at the old Wembley Conference Centre and 1 9 8. Yeah, I, I kind of played the opponent. I could see my opponent weakening, which I don't really see that happening with uh, Ronnie tonight. I think this fret, this match is not going to be lasting a whole lot longer. It's just been the, the consummate performance to date. O'Sullivan has no record at all of seizing up close to the winning line. any question about the result of this match who's going to win but the one question I think on everyone's mind in the guild hall and everyone watching are we going to see that 1000th century six well, he started the day on 997 And you almost Seven. did it a couple of frames ago until he lost position on a very difficult red, very difficult last red on 90. 14. Well, if we go on 15. the evidence of how we've seen Ronnie play to date, you would say that. Neil Robertson's played his last shot in this match. No evidence again. I've noticed a change in Ronnie Sullivan's break building. He likes to play little cannons and kind of cherry pick the reds 20. these days. Doesn't blast into the pack as early as I think he used to do. I think he just uses that cue ball. It's very clever the way he plays. That previous black, I'm sure someone like Judd Trump would have been screwing right into the bunch at pace there. Get everything in the open. It's more measured. Ronnie Sullivan's approach now in break building. Thirty. Thirty-one. O'Sullivan began his journey to a thousand centuries in his first professional match when he was 13. sixteen. He beat Jason Scott in the first round of UK qualifying, five-two. That was. His first professional century. His total also includes 15 147s. 46. Got one to left middle. 
Joe sure. Portmore, if you don't go into the pack as he did, he refused to earlier on, is when you leave yourself that top high black into the bunch, you're not always guaranteed to get something, but he's got the one red that he wanted. Fifty-five. Huge air of expectancy in the Guild Hall. Well, this 60. huge crowd is going to witness a moment 61. of snooker history, I think. Beautiful positional shot. 68. 69. Oh, that's the title. 69 ahead, 67 on. There's history coming. Perfect. As Stephen said, Mr. Sullivan is already sure of the title. 77. His 35th from his 50th ranking final. Counting invitation events. It'll take his total 83. in all to 68. 84. Five pots. 92. Is he going to tease us? He did say the other night in the studio he was going to 92. wait until another tournament to do it. Black and a red. to finish the match off. What an ending, what a conclusion. He's played a virtually flawless match. Oh, how this great crowd has loved all of this. Great crowd has loved all of this. It takes his earnings for the season over the three quarters of a million mark, but he's not interested in that. Records are the thing, and this is a fine one.
So now over to Phil Seymour to present the presentations. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please welcome your presentation party, Mr. Jason Ferguson, the chairman of the WPBSA, and Mr. Adrian Osman, head of sponsorship for title sponsors, Coral.